I suppose the thing that, what, that really is proved by everything that's said so far is that actually the hero of Brighton is actually Brighton. It's the city itself. I mean, if you think of the people that we've put up so far, it's a woman who gave us cross-dressing at Christmas. <laughs> it's a guy whose invention simply never worked, but managed to claim that he invented cinema. It's a woman who was stupid enough to swim every day in the sea that must have been so dirty. And it was a guy who was fat, 50, and furious. He was a gambler and a licentious adulterer. I mean, you know, in a sense, we have, in essence, this peculiar city which we live in. And we inhabit it, I think, in a way which is either entirely complacent and self-congratulatory, and we sit around and we go, isn't it marvellous? We live in Brighton, you know, we're by the sea, we're very, very trendy, it's all rather marvellous. <laughs> or what we do is we use it as a base, we use it as the, as the possibility for great ideas. And when it's at its best, it's, 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 it is the host of great ideas that produce innovation. And the thing about Stomp, I think, that is particularly wonderful, is that they have made an extraordinary industry. There are shows currently running on Broadway in London. There is one on the Gold Coast in uh, Australia. There is a tour in the US. There have been tours in Sweden, in Japan, in Brazil, in Chile, in Finland, all over the world. And they have done this out of hitting things. That's what they do for a living. They just hit stuff. But what's beautiful about it, it's the same, I think, as the body shop. It exemplifies a particular individuality, I think, about the city. When Anita started the body shop, the thing that always struck me was that she went around and told people that she was going to make um, hair sh shampoo out of bananas or foot lotion out of peppermints or whatever. And in Brighton, if you'd said that in Hull, you'd say, you must be mad. And in Brighton, people just said, where's the shop? <laughs> And there is a sense in which when Stomp said, you know, we're going to make money, we're going to make a career, we're going to make a living, we're going to make an industry out of hitting stuff, people went, oh, it's terrific. And that started in 1991, and it's grown and grown and grown, and it's grown now into, um, as I say, these international tours. It's been seen, I mean, just if you want some facts and figures, I did ask Loretta, their producer this afternoon, for some particular facts and figures, but you might like to know they've played over 10,000 performances to over 9 million people in 42 countries on five continents. They've consumed over 50,000 boxes of matches, 30,000 brooms, 20,000 dustbins, 10,000 drumsticks, and they've used 25,000 litres of black paint with 737 paint rollers. But what's important about them, I think, is their international reach. But crucially, why have they been able to appeal to that incredible number of people? And the answer, I think, is this. If you just ever, if you take a pen and you tap it, you can make a rhythm out of that. Well, that's great. But what Stomp do, I think, is wonderful. They tap it and they go... becomes a story. Everything they do is a little story. And it takes the idea, that very simple idea, and it takes it and it develops it into a huge narrative. And in a sense, that's what the city should be doing. The city shouldn't be complacent. It shouldn't sit on its rather capacious and often very middle class behind and flatter itself in a vast moment of, of almost necrophilia, saying how clever we are. It should be saying, we're very clever, and so therefore, what we need to do is make the future not just celebrate the past, which indeed is absolutely crucial, and I don't want to cut us off from the past, but I am the only person proposing somebody or a group of people who are living. And I think what they've done exemplifies the innovation in the city when it really, really works. And just to conclude is to say that they have done something quite remarkable with a building that has stumbled, almost fallen, throughout two decades now. They have bought the old market. And anybody who went there the other day to the opening party, they have created in it already a building that feels like it has something in it which will create great things. Even in that rather barn-like space in the middle, which, by the way, has a beautiful acoustic, but actually has always felt rather barnish, they've already given it a kind of intimacy which will welcome companies from all over, certainly the city, and we hope one day the world. So what Stomp does, I think, really, is exemplify that really classic tradition. Firstly, the unusual. If Brighton and Hove was a stick of rock, I often think it wouldn't say the same thing all the way through. 
And not only do they do that, but it's practical innovation. They have made enough money to give us a building in which other people will then produce, and that will produce a tradition. It will foster itself, it will grow from itself, it will fertilize itself. And what we have always done, and with great tribute to uh, the Theatre Royal, but the Theatre Royal has always been a receiving theatre. And I think one of the great battles we've undertaken over the last few years is to try and help the city become a producing city and not just a receiving city. So we take small ideas, we make them very exciting, and we take them to the world. And I think that's what Stomp did. It took the quirky and made it global.